And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 87. In this episode, we will be discussing chapters 16 through 18 from the book Rule of Wolves. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by our busy, busy writer bee, Lee Bardugo. Moisavayeni Casters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's say hello to some listener cities. <laughs> First, we have Roggenberg, Switzerland. Ooh, sounds nice. I want some chocolate. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. And next, Alberta, California. Yay! Woohoo! Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. We love you all. So, what's up, girl? How you been? I'm good. <laughs> I have um, the new doggy in the studio, so if you um, <laughs> see me looking around or doing weird things, um, that's because Waffles is here, literally right here, um, and she's stinky. Um. <laughs> oh, but it's it's our first like Grisha verse like named <laughs> yes animal. <laughs> Part of the family. Yes, waffles. Yeah, you're sneaky girl. Um, <laughs> she don't smell like waffles. No, she does not smell like waffles at all. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, um, interesting piece of news that came out this week. Elvira, did you see that? No. Elvira came out as gay. Really? Yes. So- yes, she has had a um, female partner for 19 years. Wow. Yes, and she never said anything because she thought that it would um, hurt her brand and her yeah. image. Um, but also, can we really enjoy the fact that the girlfriend didn't say, hey, my girlfriend Elvira, with every sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That would be really hard not It would to... be very difficult. Wow. Yeah, I was very happy that they could finally yeah. say something. About I'm, time. Yeah, I'm glad she's able to do that. I feel like I can't believe it took her so long. Yes. To be honest. Yeah. Um Elvira, like she's such a she's so iconic. Yes. And I feel like she just she I just feel like she would have just come out a lot sooner. But hey, whenever you're ready, that yeah. works. And you know, that's and also it probably had to do, you know, that she was in a relationship, you said, for that. Mm-hmm. time so that's awesome and uh, you know her partner clearly was okay with with everything i mean if they stayed then i imagine they were okay with everything um i i think i read that um the girlfriend um became her manager after uh-huh. a while um but yeah i uh very happy about that yeah she's a great person she is and i bet like being a star and because they they saw um the Ellen thing, like yes. how that played out. Yeah. So I'm sure that probably created some fear for a while. And I mean, it took us a while to get to where we are, but it's amazing we actually are here now. But go Elvira. Go Elvira. That's awesome. Yes. I love her. Yes. Oh, those movies. The movies are great. She is sexy. Yes. And smart and funny. So I love the yeah. wigs. Go her. Those wigs are fabulous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the girls are always out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are out. They are very out all the time. Hey, that's part of her brand. Yep. What, what's my brand? <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably, like, not being able to pronounce words, um, stumbling over things, and um, n- probably not stopping talking sometimes. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's my brand. <laughs> but filling the space with sound. Yes. So news for me that happened this week. Hold on kids, this is very exciting. I got my little chip on my toothpick. 
They fixed it yesterday. I was so excited. Can't call you Chip anymore. I know. It um it happened not that long ago, but it was really bothering me because like it was on my front tooth and it wasn't the chip itself that bothered me. It was the fact that it stained, like right. was yeah. catching it consistently. Mm-hmm. So it looked like I had this little like black speck and I hated Aww. it. But they fixed it oh, yesterday. God. I know. Oh. Mm. The magical Does world. Does it feel weird? Do you keep rubbing your tongue? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought it would, um, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't feel weird weird at all. Oh, good. I'm, I'm actually kind of just more nervous that it's going to kind of fall out because it's like on right. this really weird, like it, it doesn't really have anything holding it except for the tooth itself. It's not like, I know it sounds weird. It's just the placement. Mm. Isn't that exciting, listeners? It's so exciting. Aren't you so happy that you tuned in? Well, it's exciting for us that you're happy. Well, you know, we all have to be happy. Yes. <laughs> or try to be. So and when you're a grown up and have insurance, <laughs> it's the time to make yourself happy. <laughs> yes, it sure is. So you got to experience pride last weekend, right? I did. Um, my youngest son, who is 14, uh, was his first pride. Uh, so Please tell us about it. He was very, um, he was very nervous at first. Um, really? Yeah, he had his arms like crossed over him, and he was kind of, uh, and I like was on the way there, or like when he walking got- to there, like he was okay in the car. Okay, but then walking towards um, the bicentennial mall, he, yeah. uh, eh, he was he was a little. Mm, I'm like, just wait. I promise you, exactly. when you get in there, you're going to see everybody dressed like you and happy like you. Yep. And everything is going to, everything's going to be okay. And the second we got in there, um, you could see him looking around and he was, he was, he was feeling himself a little more. Um, I, I was like, you know, let's, let's get some food and <laughs> you can sit down and, and eat some food. Yeah. And while we were waiting, um, DJ Apollo Ooh, was in line. Wow. <laughs> um, he works at play. Um, <laughs> so um, we started talking and he was very nice and talked to Alden too to make him feel better. <sighs> Asked him what songs he likes and played some songs for him. And um, so Alden started feeling a little better and he was, oh. he, I, I had him, I showed him the, there was some dancing. Mm. Um, it wasn't quite like drag queens, but it was people that were living their best life. I mean, it was, they were in costumes, just dancing around basically. Um, so he started, he started loosening up Yeah, and everybody had those giant fans. Oh. And so then he really wanted one. So I bought him one. And so now he was walking and prancing around the whole thing with his, with his fan. So, um, so yeah, he had a great time. Now it was there weren't a lot of people there. That's what I was Because it ask. was raining <laughs> a lot. And also, like, I figured it's also because of the pandemic, it too. It was super might have been... muddy. Oh, Very, yeah. very muddy. Was it? Um, a so lot of the vendors were gone that's because what I was it was ask. too muddy. Was, like, I mean, like, did it feel, like, I mean, were was the space filled with all the vendors like normal? Or was it a, did they kind of, It was like, a make much it better setup than it's been in the really? past. Um, because in the past it's kind of like in a circle and then there were like little offshoots right. of places. Yeah, so this was actually much better set up because it's a very elongated oval. Okay. So they had the vendors all down the straightaway of the oval front and back. Um, and then the food trucks all around the perimeter. So it was, it was actually set up. Sense. Yes, it really did. I thought at first, like what a weird place. Um, but it was really cool, like set up. And then Alden wanted to actually look around at the historical things too. Of course, <laughs> I know, because <laughs> he's like that. But, um, but I thought it was set up really well, and I hope they continue to have it there. But it was just very, very muddy. That makes me so happy. I'm so proud of him mm-hmm. and the courage it takes. I mean, at that age to be able, like, because I mean, I didn't. I mean, I didn't go to pride when I was that age at all. No. Um, I remember going to my first pride in Nashville and this was a long time ago when it was just a couple picnic tables in yeah. front of the Parthenon at Centennial Park. Yes. Very small. Uh-huh. Um, here's my one question because this is, I actually was concerned about this. Okay. Were there any protesters? Did he see? I saw none. 
Okay, good. Because I actually, I thought about that and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I hope he I doesn't warned, have to walk by any I of warned that. him about those good. anyway, um, but there were none. We didn't see any of them. Good. But um, he had his thigh high rainbow socks on and a cute little Work. holographic skirt. And, oh. um, he would not let me put his hair in pigtails, which hurt my heart because <laughs> he well. has beautiful hair. Um, but he had glitter and yeah, he, he was, was living his best himself. life. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to let your hair down. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's awesome. I'm so happy. It sounds like he had a wonderful experience and he did. I was very proud of him. I was very, very proud of him. Yeah. And then walking back to the car, he was, you know, he was feeling better. You know, Good. he was, you could tell, you know, you, yeah, absolutely. body language, you know, he was looser and well, it's a, it's a interesting Time, it's just an interesting part of life and experiencing mm -hmm. and coming coming out or just figuring out who and you are seeing that sexually. there's other people. Exactly. That are like you. Because that's like, <laughs> that's a moment that you will always remember. Like, mm -hmm. I will always remember the moment that I got snuck into connections at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I had never seen, the only gay people I had known were from AOL and yes. then... The the plays at Circle Players. Mm -hmm. um, those were the only gay people I knew. And when they snuck me into a club, I it was just like, it was amazing. I felt like, one, I was like overly ecstatic, but it was just, it was such You're a good- You're not alone. Like you just get this feeling yes. like, oh my gosh, there they are. <laughs> and there's a lot. Yes. Yeah, like, and they're having fun and like, oh, and they're cute. There were more like little bars on Church Street back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and my foster brother at the time would take me yeah. into them, even though I was like 15, 16. <laughs> um, and they would, they were so nice to me. They would, you know, buy me drinks anyway. But, um, you know, they would talk about what color hair I should have and what color clothes I should wear and um, everybody was just like so nice, and I was like, "I love you all." <laughs> I know, I, but yeah, I mean, it was it was super nice there. Like, I think that's what Alden took away too is that everybody was talking to him. They were saying like, "I love your shirt, I love your skirt, I love your socks." Uh, so like, you know, he just that felt, means so much yeah, to him. He felt good. Yeah, and to be able to experience that, I'm so happy for him. Like, so so happy, and that takes a lot of courage too. It does. I mean, to be able to walk out into the world mm -hmm. wearing whatever you want, who you are, yep. expressing yourself. Um, I mean... I was very proud of him. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that, like, the world is heading in that direction yes. where kids are <laughs> able to do that. Yes. And literally kids. I mean, I came out at a very young age. Like, I came out when I was 13, but, like, I didn't go... Like, I wasn't, mm -hmm. like, presenting it. I wasn't telling people. I mean... I think it's fantastic that we now have prides and kids are coming and like, I mean, feeling accepted and yeah, uh, what a great place. Yeah. And he's, and he's decided that he's just, he's not going to label anything. Good. Um, he, he, he said now is the time to explore everything. Mm. And so he's, he's, I, I feel good. I feel, I feel very it. proud of myself that mm -hmm. like, you know, I parented this child. That's like, I can't make a decision yet because I haven't tried everything yet. So he's, quite, you know, he's um, exploring his sexuality and exploring his gender as well. So yes. um, he just wants to play around and see the world and have a good time. And I was like, and if you never label it, then who the heck cares? Exactly. <laughs> and have fun and do what you want for mm -hmm. as long as you like. I mean, that's such a great time in your life, too. Yep. I mean, when you're young and you can just like say, nope, I'm not ready to like settle down or anything because I, I got to explore. Yep. I want to find out. Like, it's so... Uh, I'm just so happy for him. That, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm so glad. And um, anyways, and it's it's awesome because, I mean, just sitting here thinking about how, like, you know, we this queer podcast, are, are, I would have never dreamed that we would have something no, like this. never, and, ever. <laughs> like, and openly saying it and, you know, yeah. just being proud of it. And it's, um, it's important. And um, I know that we, the Grishaverse is, like, our main topic, but I think also a huge staple for our podcast that we've held on to is it's a queer podcast mm -hmm. as well. Um, and that's why we've tried to bring other authors that bring that to the table and the writing world as well. Um, you know, it's um, 
it's just it's important. It is. Yeah, I mean, it visibility mm-hmm. that I, and yeah. So, anyways, well, that was a little rant, but that was fantastic. <laughs> Th- I did you get to see any cool drag? Did you see any like the princess or any drag no. queens? That- no, mm-hmm. they probably were like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I ain't going out in that mud. No, <laughs> no, and we didn't go until a little later too after. Like the rain had stopped and everything, so. Well, Kim Petra was performing on Saturday. I wanted, to, I would have loved to see her. I think um, that was after. Yeah. We left. And Salt and Peppa was performing on Sun on the mm-hmm. Sunday. I saw that. I was surprised. They were here last. No. They were yeah the year you, before. Yep. Did we have a pride last year? No, we didn't have one last year. Before, <clears throat> but the year before. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, my mom um really wanted me to go um and I um. No, I I didn't. But I have a really good excuse. (laughs) I did have to, like, for four years, work at Mm -hmm. Pride the entire time. And I'm not just saying, like, go and be at a booth for, like, two hours and then leave. Open, close, and then when they added two days to it, and that that was, and oh, my gosh, that was when it was in June, the end of June, in Nashville. Oh, no, the, the weather was much better. Like the temperature. Yes. Was, yeah. You helped me out so many times. I remember <laughs> there were times, like, I had to keep changing shirts because they would get so sweaty. Yeah. That's gross. And people were coming by our booth about to die. We had to, like, <laughs> put ice on them. Yeah. Yeah. And then my mom and dad come strolling in. <laughs> and my mom's just yelling at everybody. Oh, Judy. She's so sweet. So Bless her. Well, we should probably get started. Yeah, um, probably. Because... To be honest, I'm I'm loving where we are. We are like Rule of Wolves at one. It's an awesome novel. It's new, but like we're really getting into it. Like we're there's a lot of stuff happening. Mm-hmm. It's 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 exciting. So yeah. um yeah, so we got So I'm first. You are. Go girl. So chapter sixteen, we're following Nina. Oh, what a surprise. I know, me doing <laughs> you, a Nina weird. chapter. Oh my goodness. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, so it's two days later from the chapter we did two weeks ago. Okay, so let's kind so of... So we walk. were at a party where they met Dimidoff. Mm-hmm. Remember mm-hmm. Dimidoff and um, the Apparat were together. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the paragraph in the beginning makes it a point to say that they left their heavy coats at home. Hana and Nina left their heavy coats at home. That's an important tidbit. Okay. So, you got to remember, they're walking around in Fjorda without their heavy coats. Okay. I will remember that. Another great tidbit <laughs> is that they are headed to the glass bridge. Remember that? Yes. And they pass the place where the gel ash used to be. Remember, <laughs> just... we lost the gel yeah, we ash can. during the heist when it was destroyed and fell through to the water. Has pretty much blew it up. Yes. <laughs> now it is replaced by a stone copy. <laughs> hmm. So it's never going to bloom, never going to have leaves. Um, so they, yeah. have a, they have a fake <laughs> ash now. But at least they don't have to worry. Yeah, you know, true. I mean, it's a statue. It'll yep. stay there. You know, maybe it's cute stone. Oh, maybe. maybe it's marble. <laughs> maybe, like, I mean, anyways. A marble tree. Um, so while she's... Heading towards the glass bridge, she also talks to this gardener who has a thornwood tree tattoo, which stands for Saint Felix. Yes. Um, he hands her a tiny vial. So uh, we know he's one of the Hringsa, Hringsa. <laughs> network. <laughs> um, they uh, go out to this big tent to meet the prince. He's like um, that they're going to go to war soon. Uh, because Broom doesn't like talking. He's tired of talking. It's time for war. So we kind of know who's running the ship. Right. Uh, <laughs> he also makes a comment about Grisha needing to be eradicated, yeah. which doesn't bode well. Because if, if, Broom is running the show. We already know that he's like a huge witch hunter. Yep. And then the prince is saying that Grisha need to be eradicated. So we're in trouble if they actually win this war and take over. Yeah. Um, Nina goes and talks to the queen again, um, tells her that Jell doesn't like war <laughs> and to pray for Jell's children and then runs away. But I'm assuming she's talking about Grisha, right? Like, yes. she, cause she says, well, what about Jell's children? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So I'm assuming she's planting the seed in the queen's head. Absolutely. Like, hey, yeah, Jell's children. Um, as the prince and Joran, remember that's his uh, bodyguard, are headed toward the horses to go off with the hunters, the queen yells out that she wants the prince to watch the hunt with her, which, of course, is absolutely humiliating <laughs> for the prince in front of all these people <laughs> for his mommy <laughs> to be like, oh, honey, come yeah. watch with me. And I think somebody makes some comment like, yeah, go watch right. the hunt with the women and children. Yeah. So It's, it's weird she... She would know better than that. I'm sorry. Like I don't. He's never been on the hunt though. Like, and he's always been sickly. And so I right, think so she... because that's her only child, she doesn't want anything to happen to him. Okay. So yeah. that's that's that what I sense. think. Um, but of course, like he is absolutely embarrassed, and he takes it out on Joran. He whips him in the face with a riding crop multiple times. Yeah, and I hate when things like this happen even in mm -hmm. real life like when there's a situation you're upset at at whatever like yes we're entitled to be mad we're entitled to feel it but when you take it out on mm. somebody totally innocent that has nothing to do with it and when it like comes into like beating people and hurting people i, I just goodness gracious yeah I'm and sorry. jordan's just taking it um <sighs> nina Knows at this point, like we all do, that the prince is malicious and cruel. Oh. It's very, very clear. What a surprise. Yeah. Um, they, this is where it gets a little, eh, for me. They ask Broom to take him to the kennels because they're cold. Remember, they forgot coats. Right. Hmm. Okay. So can you please take us to the kennels because we're cold? And so he agrees to this, which is like, I think it's out of character for him. Well, yeah, I because know he's Hana not that stupid. Is his daughter. But, right. like, why wouldn't he want to be with the hunt and everything that's going on? Um, he says that he doesn't want to go or he doesn't care about going because he doesn't care about it, how he looks to them. But, like, it makes zero sense to me why he would be like, okay. Yeah, I... I so that... I understand. Uh, it me, seems uh, very out of... Yes. It seems out of context. One, like, I'm sorry, but like, then trying to, like, if they're trying to be kind of sneaky, it doesn't seem too sneakish. Like, yes. Just like. I, I don't know. The whole, uh, it didn't feel right to me. But at the kennel, the wolves are growling and snarling, probably because they're trained to hunt Grisha <laughs> and Nahana and Nina are right there. Do they mention the name? Of, I, I just I always forget what the names of the wolf like. They have a specific name for the wolves. Like, it's like Isen Isenwolf. Isen, thank Isen you. Wolf, That's yeah. what it was. Um, except when Nina gets closer, one of the wolves begins to whine, mm -hmm. and then they fall si like the whole kennel falls silent, and they all lay down on their stomachs. And I thought that like Hana or Nina had done this, like uh, like right. whoa, except. Nina wonders if they know her, if they knew that Trassel watched over her or that she walked with death. So she's thinking that they can sense something. Her. Yeah. So she didn't do it. That's interesting. It is very interesting. Because, I mean, dogs do have that. Like, I, I always feel like they have and a I, sixth sense. And I think maybe that that kind of like in a roundabout way has to do with the title. Rule of Wolves, like okay, yeah, I see that. So, the, so at this point, I start like kind of going, huh? Maybe this. So, ah, I don't know. Hey, I like it because you know me. Like I, I still have like I'm confused a little bit about the title. Like I, I get it, but I don't like. I feel like I mean, like I, I feel like, but you have a lot of different theories that I do, and I can't talk about it a lot right now. But I think it's it okay. has a double meaning. Well, well, I think it's like rule as in rain. Right. But rule as in like a rule. Rule like <laughs> what do I want to say? <laughs> like things you have to do or right, list like or rule like number. yeah. Um so while they're in this kennel, suddenly an alarm sounds. Oh. <laughs> a red protocol in the prison uh yeah, in the prison oh, sector. Right. Mm. <laughs> um of course that is set up by someone in the Hrinksa 
Network, which I'm sorry, it sounds like one of those marathon calling like TV channels late at night, you know, where it's like, call now and support your local <laughs> PBS station. It does, it's like, Rings Network just sounds like... Girl, write that down. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's a, there's, a, there's a writing utensil right there. I am sit- <laughs> right here. I uh, we, We're trying to think of new commercials. I am on it right now. <laughs> So Broom runs away, but gives Hana a gun to defend herself, which again seems really out of character. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. It's kind of like the suspension of belief that we have to just kind of like <laughs> hold on to. Yeah. I don't know. But Nina takes off running to Broom's office. Um, what's in it, what's in the office is a little weird. And so I wanted to put that in here. The mantle was crowded with medals, awards, and souvenirs that made Nina's head hurt. Spent bullet cartridges. What might have been a child's jawbone. A dagger with a woman's name engraved on the handle in Rovkin. Sophia Baranova. End quote. And she's like, I hope that Sophia person... Made it, but I'm going to say no. Yeah. Because <laughs> he likes trophies. Yeah. People, and yeah. And we know that. I think, I think when people, do, unfortunately, when they're out to annihilate like groups of people, mm-hmm. they like trophies like that. And we saw that in Six of Crows when like yeah. they f- saw the whole like. There's wall. pieces of Kefta. Yeah. Like. From each person that they killed. You know what? That is going to be an incredible incredible scene to see like i mean just image to see in the, in the ice show. court yeah if they do that and this ice bridge i want to yes. see i i want to see I'm, the ice bridge i'm all about that like, yes um oh yeah it, it just makes me think of glass slippers and everything i just want the, like, i i think of like elsa's <laughs> palace oh whenever God. i think about the ice court i think of elsa's palace you know what maybe elsa <laughs> needs to sing her song and like Sing it while wandering through she the ice. She needs to sing it to Broom. She could, she could give a tour <laughs> could. of the ice short. What a good idea. Hey, I'm writing that down too. <laughs> um, so she finds a safe in the office, which she assumes the letters are in. I mean, good thinking. And she uses this vial of stuff from earlier, remember from the Hringsa Network Gardener, and she hears a moan. She's looking for what causes it. She finds a dude <laughs> in like a cell. Okay, so like there's a cell in his office. Okay, and what is the the, the liquid whatever like what like this Oh, the little vial is like melting the lock. Okay, so she's safe. trying to get into okay. And, and it says that um the only evidence that will leave behind is the smell of roses. Oh, well that's nice. Yeah, cuz she said she said she never learned lock picking while she was okay. in Cutterdam, so she had to use the special thing. Um, but she's, so she's, she's trying to find so those she's letters. Going, okay. And she, there instead she finds, she a man. finds this, this guy. Um, and he looks straight up like Nikolai and he's Magnus it, Opcher. <laughs> I love that name. Yeah. Magnus Opcher. Well, and also when like reading this, like I imagine like it's a, just like a safe. So then when like I, I hear it's like a, Person, like I mean, like I, I know it's not a safe, but I like. It's well, yeah, a- there's a, there's a whole separate safe, and then she hears somebody in a separate cell, like on the other side oh, of the office. See, my head, <laughs> I not pretty much. Mu- <laughs> my head, like I was like, <laughs> she got the little safe open, and then like somehow it's like there's a little itty bitty man in there. I know he's not a little itty bitty man in there, <laughs> but like it just like somehow opened up into a big cell, and that's who was in there. He was in the safe. <laughs> That's- oh, Magnus, what you doing in the safe, hon? Yeah, he's just a little guy. <laughs> oh, well, just hanging out. He out does there. sound like a little like Ma- he does. So- oh my gosh, Magnus Upjer. Yep. Um, <laughs> just hanging wow. out in the safe. So anyway, <laughs> he is begging her to help him. He says they kidnapped him from his house. Um, they want him to authenticate the letter, which he will not do. He will not speak okay. public, publicly against his son nor Tatiana, so he won't authenticate the letters. And hello, he said, his son. So we pretty much now have, like, I think it's the first time. Like, I mean, really, There's like, been speculation. Con- 
speculation, but now I feel like this is like concrete but evidence. Magnus Upter says, my son. Yeah, so. Nikolai. Nikolai's daddy. Is an Upter. And I think it's awesome. It is. So that means also that those letters are real. Mm -hmm. They are from his mom to this Magnus Upter. So then that does make it a little scary because really now we know that officially Nikolai really doesn't have mm -hmm. claim to the throne. And Fjorda definitely has some ammunition there. Yeah. So this part aggravates me <laughs> <laughs> like so much. We'll spill it. He's trying to desperately tell Nina something. He keeps saying that he needs to get a message to someone. And he looks absolutely terrified and he's in a big rush to like, I need to tell. And she's like, okay, bye. Yeah. She's like, I got to go. I'm ah. like, yeah. I'm, I'm. <laughs> and that's the end of the chapter. But I'm like, Nina, girl, just Give let him say what he wants to say and then go. <laughs> exactly. E even if you don't listen, like at least let him say oh. it. Don't be like, hush, girl. man in cell that's been there forever and practically dying. Uriated me. Yeah. I I've got to go. Yeah. Bye. Sorry. Peace out. I'll come back for Good you. Good luck. I'll figure out. Hope if I you can. survive. Because I'm sure that was horrifying for him. Because I'm. She's like, yeah, I'll come back for you. But like, in yeah. his mind, I'm like, he thought that she was there to save him. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just leaving you. I'm yeah. sorry. You ain't the letters. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to find a man. Yep. Yeah. I'll come back for you though. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. I need to tell. How horrifying. Right. Yep. How sad. Yep. Mm. Well. So now we'll never know. Well, well, yeah. For the moment. So was that? Uh, that's uh, it. That's it. Okay. okay. So I've got chapters, the next two chapters, and they've got a lot going on. So chapter um, 17 is Zoya, my girl. And so pretty much, let's just remember, we left off at a pretty dramatic moment. Um. The Darkling somehow, like, I mean, if you remember last, um, where it ended, pretty much, like, Darkling bent over, <laughs> there was, like, smoke and mirror, like, it was like, what was going on? Darkling was doing something. Darkling somehow is getting away. Yes. Okay. Um, apparently all, um, and this is a quote, apparently all he has needed, quote, he needed Alina and Mal, the Sun Summoner who had slain him, and the amplifier who carried the blood of his ancestors. He'd felt no guilt, no shame, end quote. Okay, so that, I'm just saying, that confused me for a very long time mm -hmm. last night because I've, I've read this once, but I didn't think to keep reading, and I got stuck on that as like, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Like, how is he coming back and getting all his powers from this. Like, literally, like, spent 45 minutes to an hour. Because you didn't read on. Nope. Then I did. Okay, <laughs> so, um, anyways, moving on, um, he actually, um, like, he's not, he's he's got his powers back, but also the Nichevoya are, like, mm -hmm. kind of, like, I mean, seem into, they've returned, and they're helping him flee. He's kind of, like, I mean, I'm picturing him kind of on, like, Hovering on them, like kind of like a magic carpet ride. Um, the Nichevoya are taking them off. Um, however, they're like in all this, like there's gunshots, and Zoya does hear the Darkling be like, ow, or something. Like somehow, like they know, like she hears that he did get hit. So for the first time, like, I mean, okay, he can bleed. So, I mean, because he's in a mortal body. Mm hmm. Yes. So, um, so he can bleed. It sounds like he's, um, he's being lifted off the ground by like this, like black cloud, as I said, the Nietzsche boy, uh, and they're just like taking him off. And then he's just, he's gone. So that to me, like, I was just like, what's that? What? <laughs> like, okay. Like this makes no sense. And all of a sudden he's just gone. Um, so here's how. Okay, here's the quote. Um, and this is a little bit of a long one, but I just felt like I needed to explain it. Because, well, me not explain it, Lee explain it. So here's the quote. How did he do it? What happened in there? He drove this through our hands. Mal uncurled his fingers. In his palm lay a long, bloody thorn. 
a piece of the thornwood. The Darkling must have hidden it somewhere in Yuri's clothing. He'd kept it with him since the failed Obispaya and their battle on the fold, waiting for his moment. He needed our blood, said Alina, the Sun Saint and the Tracker, Moritzova's other descendant, the two people who had almost ended his life. Only our own power can destroy us, and even then, it's not a sure thing. He'd been taunting them the whole time, begging them to guess at his plan. I understand we're blood-related. End quote. So, still a little confused, but I mean, like, it gives a little <laughs> bit more information. The one thing that I am really enjoying this trip through this book now is the Thornwood mm -hmm. and how how much like it really is related to just I think the Grisha verse like in general like the making of it too yeah. um I think it's like um, a massive like so I think that's kind of neat um I do think it's weird that somehow he's held on to this thorn for so long yeah um anyways it's definitely apparent that the Darkling isn't the usual Darkling from before he died, though. Um, they kind of discuss how it seems like parts of Yuri are there. Like, he's not just, he's not himself. Mm -hmm. um, Zoya is freaked and pissed, but Alina seems to help calm her down because Zoya's just like, he got away, like the one person that didn't I hate and shouldn't have and... I think she's also mad because she didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't like being bested. Yeah. And to be honest, it I wouldn't have ex expected it either. I mean, the way of it, like, it, he, he bent over while having tea, and all of a sudden, boom, bam, he's gone. Okay. So, um, this next part. Okay. So, um, sorry, I have to read the rest of this chapter. <laughs> um, it's just, just because I can't explain it, and... Lee does it best, but this is, um, it's a short chat. So here's the quote. Zoya, Alina said, drawing her back to the present, to her, to her fear, to this wretched place. You are not alone in this and you can be beaten. He is immortal. Then why did he flinch when you brought down the storm? It did nothing. He sees something in you that frightens him. He always has. Why do you think he worked? so hard to make us doubt ourselves. He was afraid of what we might become. We are the dragon. We do not lie down to die. Some tiny fraction of the fear in her receded. Zoya, you know we're here if you need us. But your power, I can still pick up a rifle. I was a soldier before I was a saint. I like this one. She's un... This is Juris's voice, by the way. I like this one. She's unafraid. Juris whisper an echo of Zoya's own grudging thoughts about the orphan girl she'd once resented and despised. The dragon's laugh rumbled through her. Loss has made her bold. If only I could say the same of you. Zoya sighed. That's all, that's all well and good, she said. But how am I going to tell the king? End quote. End chapter. So... There was my my moment I've been waiting for. Bye, Alina. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Thanks for the cameo. It was nice. Bye. Um, yep. Bye. I do think it's neat that we're kind of like hearing like Juris's part mm -hmm. of Zoya. Um, so and that ends that chapter. Hold on to your seats, kid, because chapter eighteen is just it's it's full of action. It's Nikolai. <laughs> so Nikolai is. Finishing up entertaining. Um, remember, there's a wedding. Remember, that surprise wedding um, that we had. Um, and Jenny and David got married. Surprise! <laughs> um, so Nikolai is finishing up entertaining Queen Maki after dinner. Or Makai, or however we... Whatever. Yeah. Because um, she obviously is not happy that she's there <laughs> and she got tricked. But she ain't going to just like get up and be like, peace out. She... I guess she's got some couth. She is um, ready to return home, and while he is walking her to her coach, they discuss the blight, um, which I think is interesting because I find it weird that she's going to actually start talking about, like, worldly issues, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, she's like, so this is going on in my country, too. And, yeah, it's going on everywhere. Um, the queen tells Nikolai that he will um, share any intelligence he discovers about the blight. 
He replies with saying that he will deal with the Fjordan War first. After that, then he will focus on discovering the reasoning and the culprit for this blight, um, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, Fjordan is like knocking on their door. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to be alive to be able to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, exactly. I mean, so Nikolai suspects that the queen has lost more than just land, um, that there must be some kind of personal um Thing that she lost and we do know that mm -hmm, from the from very the first chapter very first yeah yep um so anyways queen maki out she leave um and nikolai returns to what's left of the party um it it's hard for a lot um uh, to enjoy it's hard for him to enjoy because they have um loved ones I'm sorry, this this note made no sense. I'm going to skip that one. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I think my autocorrect, if you know me and I text you, you know I have issues with this. I don't ever double check text messages at all. So I look at them later and they make no sense. <laughs> Anyways, um, Nikolai returns to this party though. And it's kind of like, there's a lot of little things going on. Nadia is worried about Tamar. Um, because we got to remember they left. So um, um, Nadia is worried about her girl, and Tolia supposedly has um, made peace. Um, I guess that his 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 twin his twin is mm -hmm. where she is. But Nikolai could tell it still bothered him. Jenya asked Nikolai if they have gotten any word on the mission back from Shuhan. And he replies saying that the only thing that they've heard is that they've made it safely and there has there they have met with Maki's ministers. But beyond that, nothing. So they made it. They're talking to the ministers, but that's all we got. Um, Nikolai finds that he's just under all this, I would understand this too. He's having problems sleeping. Um You think? Yeah. So um, there's just too much on his mind. Poor guy. Um, and this is going to bring us to our scene for this, e for this evening. Yes. Um, sure. Um, and Terry is going to be playing Nikolai. And I'm going to be playing Tolia. And we also will be kind of play like, you'll see. As you know, sometimes the parts get flipped. We're just reading parts because they're good parts. Um a special thank you for our background music created by Kendra Dantes in Year 26. Kendra Dantes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. In Year 26, you have been rocking it. Mm -hmm. Lucifer, episode one. Check her out. Anyways, um, so are you ready to do our um, theme? I am. Okay. Have you ever played Nikolai before? I'm sure you I, have. I, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I've never played Tolia, I don't think. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one. I know. And I didn't think about a voice for it, so um, we'll just do. We'll yeah, I do love it when I do prepare like that. <laughs> um, but I just sometimes don't. I'll, I'll try next time. Anyways, okay. So, curtain up. He rang for tea. He'd spend the night working. It was Tolia who brought the tray. He'd abandoned his red kefta and changed back into his olive drab uniform. I can't sleep. We could play cards, suggested Nikolai. I've been working on a new poem. Or we could shoot ourselves out of a cannon. Tolia's glower was ferocious. A bit of culture wouldn't hurt you. I have no objection to culture. I'll have you know I've fallen asleep to the very, uh, the, of the very best valids, pour yourself a cup. As Tolia poured, Nikolai asked, Tolia, Tamar found the girl of her dreams. How is it you're still alone? Tolia shrugged his huge shoulders. <laughs> I have my faith, my books. I've never wanted more. Love it. Sorry, amazing quote. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in love with Alina? Tolia finished pouring before he said, Were you? I cared about her. I still do. I think I could have loved her in time. Tolia took a sip of his tea. I know she was only a girl to you, but to me, she is a saint. That's a different kind of love. A loud bell began to ring from somewhere in the distance. 
What is that? asked Tolia, his brow creasing. Nikolai was already on his feet. The alarm bells in the lower town. He hadn't heard them since his doomed birthday party when most of the lance offline had been slaughtered. Get. He heard a distant drone, engines in the sky. All the saints, it can't be. Then a whoosh, like the loud, excited roar of a crowd. Boom! The first bomb struck. The room shook, and Nikolai and Tolia were nearly thrown from their feet. Then another boom, and another boom, boom! Nikolai threw the door open. Half the hallway was caved in, leaving it blocked by a slump of rubble. The air was full of plaster dust. Nikolai could only pray that no guards or servants had been trapped already. He sprinted down the hall, Tolia beside him, and grabbed the first guard he could find, a young captain named Yarik. He was covered in dust and bleeding from where he'd been struck by something, but he had his rifle in his hand and his eyes were clear. Your Highness, he shouted, we have to get you to the tunnels. Gather everyone you can. Clear the palace and get them underground. But... Boom! The roof may come down, said Nikolai. Move! The very earth was shaking. It felt as if the world was coming apart. Mobilize the Grisha to the town, Nikolai said as he and Tolia ran toward the little palace. They'll need healers and squallers to help move the debris. Signal Laslion and get our flyers in the air. Where are you going, said Tolia. Nikolai was already racing toward the lake. Up! Boom! In scene! <laughs> Lots of booms. Yeah, that was, um, I think that was our most action packed yes. scene we've done. <laughs> Probably. And that's what we tried. Mm -hmm. I added some boom booms in boom there. Booms. Booms! But obviously, Fjorda is there. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of horrifying. Um, they weren't expecting it. So Nikolai, um, as he, as we just heard, is going up. Okay. Yep. So Nikolai gets in his ship. Uh, well, his like, yeah, whatever. His Not flying, flying ship. ship. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his thing that flies, and is um takes flight to help try and defend his people and his home. He just, you know, he's trying to figure out what to do. This surprise attack from Fjorda has changed the game. He um. He, we start hearing him thinking in his head, like, now there will, there's not going to be any more talks with David about possible missile, like a possible missile mm -hmm. project. It has to be green lighted now. Um, yeah, because look what's happening. <laughs> Things are happening. Yep. Nikolai wonders how much of the timing of this attack was planned. Um, he starts to wonder if. There was a coincidence that Queen Maki had just left. Hmm. Was she a part of it? Did she know what was going to happen? That is a bit of a coinkadink. Interesting, hmm. yes. The Furidan airships, however, were um, were plated the color of the night sky. So it was impossible to see them like while flying around. Um, so he shuts off his engine in hopes to hear them. He does, and it it's successful, and he shoots one down, but then that makes him visible, so then he's got now another flyer on him um, and is running on impulse, and ha he just has no clue how much damage his ship has endured. It's just, I'm sure, bang, bang. Yeah. Through some of the clouds, he begins to see some of the damage, and it's pretty catastrophic. <laughs> um, the little palace has... The two domes have collapsed, and he can't tell how much of the Grand Palace, um, how much is still there. Um, it's just like, he should set his fire down. But no, not when his people below were so vulnerable. He couldn't see at all, but his demon could. So, he took a shot and decided to let his demon out for a little walk. <laughs> So this is interesting, okay? And I, of course, it's a quote. So, hungry for destruction, the demon hurtled toward it through the night and slammed into the Fjordan bomber, its talons tearing into steel. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that there was like a like a flyer there. So, um, yeah. No, Nikolai willed it to pull back. I want them to know. I want them to live in fear. The demon climbed onto the front of the plane and slammed its clawed hand through the cockpit glass. The Fjordan pilot screamed and Nikolai was looking directly into his eyes. 
Let them understand what they're fighting now. Let them know what's waiting next time they invade Ravka's skies. He saw the demon reflected in his enemy's eyes. I am the monster and the monster is me. End quote. So Nikolai is the demon and he is just totally comfortable with himself. Um, Daddy's got a new pair of shoes and he's just wearing it out. And I mean, anyways, he's just, he thinks out loud. He's, so this next part, he's thinking in his mind, but I think he's thinking like he, it's out loud. He's the Fjordan soldier um, is scared out of their mind. I mean, could you imagine if you're flying a plane and then all of a sudden a demon is on the front? Like, <laughs> like I mean, just like landed up there and it's just like, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, so it's probably scared the living hell out of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, come on, this poor man literally, like it says, has pissed himself. <laughs> so um, the smell of urine is in the air. Mm. Mm. So he thinks out loud to warn Fjorda that, they don't need to be messing around no more. They gotta, he's okay with being like, I'm a demon king and I'm here and I'm ready to party. Go back and tell all the Fjordans that the king is a demon. I got wings and yeah. He summons the demon back inside him. And surprisingly, without the demon having any pushback, I guess, um, he lands his aircraft um, to find the horror of all the destruction around and um, sadly, like all of a sudden, he see Jenya is in her wedding dress and she's crying, and she says she cannot find David. End. Thank you. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that was a lot. Yes. Um, a lot happened, mm-hmm. and I mean, it just, I mean, and that is the end of part one of this book. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me, I want (laughs) to ask you. So when, when, since we, what did you, the first time you read this, because we can think that, like, what did you think when you got to this ending? Like, what did you, like, what did you think was going to happen when you started the next section? I had no idea, honestly. Did you think Dave was, you think anything about David? Did you think anything like? Do you have any? No, I thought. No. I thought maybe he ran into battle. Yeah. Um. Took his. Um. I don't know. Special weapony thingies and took off running, yeah. trying to help, or I don't know something like that. But I, I didn't. Yes. I, I was also like on a speed reading mission at this point, so I didn't really pause <laughs> to think yeah. about it. But I think in my brain, I I was thinking that he was like. He ran off to help. Yeah. Well, because he's been there since the very beginning, mm-hmm. and he's always been such, like, a calm, quiet, like, collected character. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, we just saw the wedding. So, like, I mean, to see to see Jenya, like, in tears that she can't find him, and, like, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine this destruction. I'm guessing, like, I mean, it, it's, it's just probably devastation. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, just, like, buildings crumbled everywhere, and, like, um, I... Uh, I just know that I thought that there's a lot that happened in that last chapter. Like, the demon, like, one, he's, like, actually okay with and cool with now. And they, like, understand one another. They're the same person. Um, he can control. He can control it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and that's just, I'm, I'm, we knew he could control it, but. Not like that. Like, but not to the. Not to be able to, like. Let it go and, and come Yeah, back. exactly. Like, jump onto another, like, on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I just, that scene I keep envisioning for some reason. (laughs) But, um, yeah, so we've, that's a new thing. Um, Definitely, I want to keep my eye on because if we think about the demon and Nikolai, they've been together, they've been together for a while. They sure have. Um, They've had a relationship. It's been a rocky road for them Mm -hmm. since the trilogy and when they first met. And um, I think now they're finally coming to, like, you know, good place. They have an understanding. They do. They've definitely <laughs> yeah. had some therapy or something. I mean, they've, they've been going. They're able to listen to one another mm-hmm. and respect one another. Yeah. It's very important. Um, Boundaries. But anyways, yes. <laughs> um, so I was really freaked out, though. Like, I mean, just that this was the end of section one of this book. I didn't know what to expect either. Um, I am... Um, 
I thought it ended very abruptly. And I literally like had no clue what to expect either. And just because normally, like, I kind of have an idea of where, you know, we think where the story's going. Right. But with this, mm -mm. I mean, the demon just jumped on a plane. I can't stop t talking about that because that's just <laughs> for some reason. I think because I keep laughing, thinking about, I envision a Fjordan man, the pilot, like, yeah. just like frightened and pissing himself. <laughs> so, I mean, you're anyway. enjoying that too much. I do. I get these. <laughs> yeah, I have pictures that like yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah. So that's the end of section one. We will start section two next, and yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, I was gonna ask. I, I would no. Nope, I'm not gonna ask that. I was gonna ask if you had any like if we wanted to make any predictions, mm -mm. but nope. Let's not. But it is now that very special time. Or, or, or. Grisha Cast, Cast News! You know, we really don't need to scream anymore because it, it doesn't go with the music that we play, but we're still going to do it because it's fun. Yes. And that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. And now, let's go to our... Grisha in the field. Alex. Alex. Hey, Alex. Hello. 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 How, How are you guys? We are good. Fun. Yeah, just having fun. I'm going through Rule of Wolves. So, how's the field? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, it's a fabulous field. I'm having a great time. Oh, good. Have you planted any like cute little flowers or anything? <laughs> I haven't had time. I'm looking for all this news. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got my net. Well, I will make sure to that we have some time to like get some like you know some greenery there for you. So okay. Anyways, so what do we got going on? Um, I actually just found this out a few minutes ago. Apparently, Netflix is having a global fan event. I'm not sure if Shadow and Bone will be involved, but it is happening on the 25th, which is this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hot off the press. So that's exciting. Yes. <laughs> I'm quite excited. And uh, Lee Bardugo was a part of that Eventbrite thing that happened, but I was unable to go because I had to record with another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. We're just full of podcasts. That's what happens when you're popular. Yeah. Exactly. Because. Well, I I think it was I did get to catch some of it, and she, it was nice seeing Lee and hearing from her. She um pretty much what I got from it is she's just been really busy and working on the pilot for Ninth House, finishing Ninth House two, and then also Shadow and Bone season two. So she's just been busy, little bee. Awesome. Yeah. So. I'm excited to see what happens. And she said something last night that I thought she, I thought she had said the opposite before, but she mentioned something about how she had at one point planned on writing Six of Crows 3. I'm not even joking. She said that. And I was mm. like, I swear that she said that she, she said she that might. Rule of Wolves was it, was the end. It was. Yeah, at least for a while. Yes. Huh, all right. Well, she, she she fingers left, crossed, y'all. She left it open-ended so we could see more. But anyways, well, that's still some good news. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much for coming in from the field. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for letting me come in. Uh, it's, it, we love it. We, we, we try to be as hospitable as we can. We are Southern. So Yeah. Well, you have a good one, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, that that's awesome. I mean, we we're, we're getting tidbits of news, you know. I mean, as yeah. expected. It's fun um, to have news. I'm glad that Lee made like I mean, came out of her shell, like said hi for a <laughs> yeah. minute. Um, I know she can't talk about anything. She came out of hiding for a minute. What I really cannot wait for is for COVID to get. Done and 
watch her actually be able to go on a book tour again. Mm -hmm. Because like I just really hope that when ninth like ninth house two comes out that like she can. Yeah. Like I really hope so. Um but who knows? Because I didn't expect we would still be in this situation today. Um, yeah. <laughs> um it's <laughs> whew. But who knows? Maybe this is the new life forever. <laughs> Maybe we'll never go on book tours again. Who knows? <laughs> yep, it's all up in the air. It is. But um anyways, um that was a great episode, girl. Yes. You know, we, we covered the end of that and um I'm really excited to, you know, and also a little sad to cover the I know. end of yep. Rule of Wolves, but you know, it's um there's still so much and it's just um it's going to be neat. I'm excited to like I'm really excited that this is my second time reading it, to be honest. Yeah. Because I'm catching more things. Yes. <laughs> like, a lot more. You're helping me catch more things. Ooh. 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 Always, you do. Um, but, yeah, I think it's it's neat reading it for a second time and going through it this way. And so, anyways, I'm excited for the rest of it. Um, no. However, for you listeners out there, if you have not read all of Rule of Wolves, and you are interested in, like, I mean, if you have any theories and you'd like to share them, we'd love to hear it. Really, I would, I, I really would love to hear what people's theories are. Um, because I tried that when I was reading it and I couldn't get anybody to really give me any theories. I mean, my theory before the book even started was I just was like, gung ho, Nikolai is gonna die. <laughs> yes, you were. That was my you were theory. very adamant about that. Yes. Um, I didn't know if he would get if he was going to die, but I I was thinking that um, there definitely would be some sort of sacrifice of some sorts. Like I yeah, I figured he would either like die to help the situation or something. Like I yeah yeah, well, I, knew, I knew something was going to happen with him. I agree because like the way it's left off, like I mean the whole Obis Baya thing and the mm -hmm. demon thing. Like I mean it just seemed like. I don't know. Yeah. There's no way he's going to get rid of it. But who knew that now they're like Golden Girls friends? <laughs> I mean, yep. thank you for being a friend. Mm -hmm. Travel down the road and back again. Oh, anyways. <laughs> um, so, um, um, thank you for our Fable listeners. Um, yeah. Those of you that are on the Fable app, mm -hmm. we actually will be starting Siege and Storm Woo -woo. soon. Woohoo! So... That's exciting, and yeah, we love it. And anyways, we will be covering chapter... Hold on, let me make sure this is right. I know. I probably put this... <laughs> yeah, I did it wrong. I'm sorry. I've got it right here. Uh, next week, we will be covering the first two chapters. Chapters 19 and 20 um, of the second part. Alrighty. Yes. Because um, the first chapter is a big old hunkin' 21 pages. Hunk a hunk. Yep. And then the second one is 15. So actually, this is going to be a pretty big read. This is probably going to be our biggest. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, but we're going to get we got it. juicy stuff. It's exciting. So anyways, yes. Read um, 19 and 20 for next week. And... Um, yeah, get ready because October is just around the corner and you know we love to celebrate it. Grisha anniversary time, cosplay time, and we've got some tricks up our sleeves. I know I do. <laughs> so. You're all about the tricks. Girl, so are you. <laughs> really. Anyway, well, <laughs> long live the Grisha -verse. Like we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No, no mourners. mourners. No funeral. This has been Grisha Cast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. At Grisha Cast. Thank you for Kendra Dante's in year 26 with amazing background music. Our staff, Chris, Alex, Sid, Michelle, and Amber!